Hi friends, Miss Heather here with our monthly memory verse for the month of June. So watch me and then follow along. Here we go. And now, faith. So you take your pointer finger to your forehead and then you form two circles and put your fingers out. So and now, faith, hope, and love remain these three things and the greatest of these is love that is first corinthians 13 13. Okay now, okay now let's all try it together with the motions and using your words here we go and faith hope and love remain these three things and the greatest of these is love that's first corinthians 13 13. miss susan asked me to share another song with you and i'm so glad she did because i'm so happy that you're at home and singing and praising jesus um, while we're not able to be together. I used to lead music on Sunday mornings with um, the children, and some of you may recognize me. My name is Miss Mary, and um, I'm going to sing a song that we've sung before, and um, it was real popular. It was called Shut the Door. Shut the Door. Kind of sounds like Shut the Door. And I just wanted to encourage you while we're singing this. It's a real fast, upbeat song, um, and it has a uh, um, a back and forth to it. And so one of the things that's fun to do when you're singing something that's really fast paced is to add some music and some instruments to it. It's fun. And you can do that at home. You can put some beans or some rice and some cans and wrap it up with some duct tape and make a shaker. Or you can take a metal cookie sheet and, and use a, um, a wooden spoon and, and kind of whack on it. Or you can switch it around and get a piece of wood and whack on it with a metal spoon. But when I was in high school, I used to actually play the spoons. And so just wanted to show you that. I can't sing and do it at the same time because it's loud. But I'm, I'm using my leg and I hold the spoons together this way. And I make sure that this is real tight. My third finger under here is real tight here. This, this is my brace. And then this second finger and my thumb are on top of each other. And I just want to kind of practice kind of making a kind of noise like that. Ooh, hold on. You can kind of hear the rhythm of it. So it's kind of fun to get your own instrument. So I just wanted to encourage you to do that. All right, we're going to sing Shut the Dido. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Light the candle, everything's all right. Light the candle, everything's all right. Oh, when I was a baby child. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Good and bad was just a game. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Many years and many trials. Shut the door, keep out the devil. They proved to me they're not the same. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Gonna light the candle, everything's all right. Light the candle, everything's all right. Oh, Satan is an evil charmer. Shut the door, keep out the devil. He's hungry for a soul to herd. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. And without your holy armor, shut the door, keep out the devil. He will eat you for dessert. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Light the candle, everything's all right. Light the candle, everything's all right. Well, hey, 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 shut the door. Hey, 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 shut the door. Hey, hey, you better shut the door and say a prayer. He won't be back no more. My mama used to sing the song, shut the door, keep out the devil. My papa used to sing it too, shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Jesus called and took them home, shut the door. 
keep out the devil. And so I'll sing this song to you. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. When I light the candle, everything's all right. Light the candle, everything's all right. Light the candle, everything's all right. There you go, shut the door. I hope you enjoyed the music. Now it's time for our Bible story. Hi boys and girls, happy Sunday. My name is Jennifer Parker. Most people call me JP. I've got a great story for you today. I want to touch though on something that Mr. Scott Gambrell talked about a couple of Sundays ago and that was the story of David and Goliath. David we know fought Goliath and, and he won that battle. Um, and he didn't talk a lot about the specifics of that, but he talked about David's heart, and that's why God had chosen him. And he challenged you to work on your heart as well. Um, and so we're jumping back to chapter 16. That was in chapter 17 of First Samuel. Um, when David fought Goliath, he was probably about 14 years old. So when this story happened, he was probably about 10, maybe 11 we don't really know, but Bible scholars, those are people who study the Bible a lot, they just kind of look back at, at, at uh, David's family tree and, and kind of came up with that. So the cool thing is David was just a boy when this happened. Um, and so we're going to pick it up in chapter 16. And um, God had asked Samuel, who was a priest and a judge and a prophet, to go to Bethlehem to the home of Jesse and that he was going to appoint one of Jesse's sons as the next king of Israel. And so Samuel obeyed and went. And um, when he got there and met Jesse, each of his sons were to come out and to pass by him. And, and when that first son came out, his name was Eliab. And Samuel immediately looked at him and he thought, Surely this is the Lord's anointed one. This is the Lord's chosen one. Um, Eliab was probably a, a good-looking guy, a strong guy. He was in the Israeli army. He probably was uh, very warrior-like. And so Samuel immediately sized him up and said, Yeah, that's got to be him. He'd make a great king. But the next verse, which is the key verse, verse number 7, The Lord says to Samuel, Do not consider his height or his appearance, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Well, the next son came by, and the next son, and the next son, until each of the seven sons had come by Jesse. And the Lord had not told him that any of them was the one that he had chosen. Well, after they all seven passed by, Samuel says to Jesse, are, are these all the sons that you have? And Jesse says, well, they're still the youngest, but he's out in the field to, uh, tending to the sheep. And Samuel said, go get him. We won't go any further until he is here. And so a messenger sent, and David um, comes in from the fields. And as soon as he comes in, the Lord says to Samuel, rise and anoint him. He is the one. And verse 13 says, So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. That was the one that God had chosen, David, because of his heart. Even though he was still a boy, God knew David's heart. And so when we flip back and we look at that key verse... We need to look at it and how and what it means to us. God says, you know, I don't care about your outward appearance. I care what's about what's in your heart. And that's what he wants us to learn, I think, from this passage. You know, the world, society, people think that you've got to be pretty or you've got to have long hair or certain color hair. You've got to wear a certain color of clothes or you've got to have certain pieces of jewelry. But what God says, you know, that's not important to me. 
What's important to me is what's in, inside of a person. And those are the characteristics that he cares about. You know, he wants you to have a heart like his. And his heart is kind, it's compassionate, it's loving. And that's what he's saying to you. You know, are you kind to your siblings? Do you do what your parents ask you to do? Do you obey your teachers? Um, those are the things that are important to God. And those are the things he looks at. And then I think, secondly, what he's saying is, I don't want you to judge other people on how they look. I want you to see the things that I see. And so he's saying, again, when you see other people, don't, don't look at what they have on, but look at those things that are inside of a person that makes them more like God. You know, only God knows the heart of a person. As good as your parents know you, they don't know everything that you're thinking and feeling but God does, and he says that's what's important. So my challenge for you this week, boys and girls, is that you would work on your heart's attitude, those things that make you more like God. God also wants you to look at other people in the same way that he looks at them. He doesn't want you to judge them. But he wants you to look at what makes them important to him. You know, God said to David that David was a man after God's own heart. And um, I think that that's the greatest compliment that God could say to you. Are you a kid after God's own heart? Do you spend your days trying to be more like God and like his son Jesus? Are those the characteristics that you have? And so this week, spend your time working on that to be more like your Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we praise you and we thank you. Lord, we know that you look at what's on the inside of us and that that's what's most important for us. Help us to spend our time working on those characteristics that make us more like Jesus. And we, when we meet and greet other people, help us to look for those things in those people that make them more like you. Help us not to judge and to look at the outward appearance. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thanks, boys and girls. Have a great week.